Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a Abu Garcia. It's an A20 LC, a line counter. I'm not familiar with this reel. This reel was sent in by Kevin. Kevin sent me a batch of reels that uh, needed some work. This one says it's got two steel bearings. It's hard to see the gear ratio. It looks like it's worn off. Probably three to one or four to one based on the case size. It does have a broken uh, window and line counter, but the, the line counter reset, but the line counter itself works. So this could still uh, serve, well, kind of part of that function. But well, we're going to take this reel apart because I'm curious about the design here. This looks very much like the old Shakespeare Tidewater reels, but uh, well, Shakespeare and Abu Garcia were competitors, so I'm not sure what we're, what we're going to find inside. But, uh, well, that's part of the fun of, of servicing all kinds of reels. Well, we're going to remove the exterior pieces and parts. As I do, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do uh, like reel repair, if you like learning about fishing reels, if you like seeing how they are serviced, well, then I would encourage you to, uh, to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please use that notification button. That'll help you to see when I am posting. Well, I just used a 10 millimeter nut to uh, wrench to take the nut off, or the nut cap, and then we can remove the handle. And uh, well, sometimes handles say a lot. This one, uh, well, it says the plating wasn't very good on it because the plating uh, got knocked off and turned to rust. Uh, not much you can do there. I'm going to use a light steel wool to get the rust off of the arm or the blade of the handle. And then we're going to take the pieces and parts that I remove. I'm going to place them into a parts tray. And my parts tray is a, well, it's the bottom of a fast food container. All right. One of the things you should do when you're not familiar with a fishing reel is take lots of pictures as you disassemble the reel. Now, my pictures are videos. You don't need a video. But uh, you should take pictures at critical junctions just so, well, if you get a little bit lost, confused, uh, you have to leave the project for a while and you, you don't trust your memory. Pictures are a wonderful way to kind of recapture what the orientation is of the pieces and parts, what you took off, where you took them off from, and so on. Well, this one's got uh, one tension washer, maybe a second. Nope. And some kind of looks like it looks like a bushing. It's advertised that there are bearings in here, but probably not there. And because I don't know the history of this reel, and it does say uh, steel on those bearings, well, I'm not going to trust the screws. We're going to put a little bit of solvent in there. Well, and that's exactly why, because this main post is uh, pulling, which means that the the screw is uh, stuck. And that's always kind of tough. You don't want to scar your the pole while you uh, grab it. So what I use is I use some steel wool as a buffer or I use a scrubby pad as a buffer. Either one will work. Channel lock pliers to grip it. Let's see if we can't turn it. There we go. Sometimes they're just stubborn. They've been sitting in there a long time. And if they happen to be steel and not stainless steel, well, they're going to start rusting in those grooves. And if they rust in those grooves, there's a good likelihood that you may break them off during disassembly. Okay. That's the first one is out. There's five of those. Let's see if we have any more luck with this one. And, of course, we don't. So let's do that again. As you... Uh, as you service your reels, you want to be careful. Again, this one's kind of rough shape cosmetically, but you don't want to make it any rougher. All right. And on this one, this has a slot where that line guide arm is going to ride. And you're going to need to make sure when we go back and reset this that uh, we have that slot aligned properly. Otherwise, that line guide will jam. Okay, that's two down. And what I'm doing is I'm noticing as I'm taking these screws out, if there are any short ones, long ones, or oddball ones, if you will. The first two were machine threads. This one is a, uh, well, it's a, it's a rough thread. So 
it looks like where you are with the case when you do not have a line guide, you're going to have a rough threaded screw. So that's important to remember as you go to put it back in. That one was rough threaded. And this one, if we're staying true to form, this one should be machine threaded. So the, the cross posts and the real seat have, well, this one's not machine threaded. This is rough threaded. So uh, the, th the only two that have the threads are the ones that line up with the two cross posts. Let's remove this side case, see what we have. Probably been a while since this one's been opened up. And uh, while it's not a tide water, kind of looks like a tide water, on this side of the case we have a eccentric that's going to be your free spool release. And you have a pivot point in the middle here. So it's important to note where that pivot point is. Looks like this is also off. The spring belongs in that little hole there. So let's go put that back in. I'm just going to use a, a small pliers to compress. Aim and plant, if you will. There you go. We're back in now. Probably would have been easier in the other mode. Okay. So that's how your eccentric spring goes if it happened to have popped off. This is a single sided mount on this. So this is set up almost like a bait caster is set up. We're going to have a main gear. Well, that's a bushing, so I don't know where their bearings are yet. Then we have a small flex washer underneath. Then we're going to have, take a picture here, know that your anti-reverse dog and how that sits. Then we can pull up and out on our main gear. And this one looks like it's probably just a bushing because there's nothing under here and nothing retaining it. So on the, the back side of this, I trust, is a um, C-clip, or an E-clip, if you will. Okay, one more piece to take off here, which is your yoke. Again, take pictures. Note that the yoke has a kind of an interesting kind of nine and six, if you will, on the top. That's going to be the way it faces. Don't put it in this way. It's backwards. And let's uh, make sure it's cleaned. I just wiped it off. Check the pinion gear. This is dead, dead solid dry. If it was dirty, if it was clogged with old greases, then well, what you want to do is you want to remove all that old grease before you go putting new grease on. There is a burring right here. It's also person here. Put that back on. And there's a bearing inside. We're going to oil it from here. I don't know if it's going to come out with the spool or not, but I know I have the opportunity right here. So I'm guessing that the two bearings that are that are noted on this are going to be bearings that um, lodge on each side of the spool. All right. Just because I have it open and I have that piece off, I'm going to spray that with some penetrating oil, wipe it down, and use the penetrating oil as a cleaner. So we can get that back plate cleaned. We've oiled that burn. We can bring this assembly back on. There's a ridge on the back here, so it's kind of hard to get that on the wrong side. It will sit in the circle. And now we see why we have that, uh, that kind of six and nine offset there based on what we're seeing on the uh, free spool release. If you didn't know, there's ramps here. Those ramps are going to be how this is tripped. So that's also an indication as to how the, the yoke is going to go on to the, uh, uh, the pinion gear. Oh, we've got it backwards. 
that slotted side of the pinion gear faces this way. Okay, and turn it to make sure you mesh into the spool. There we go. Now we're meshed in. And you know you're meshed in when you can turn the spool by turning that pinion gear. We have a couple of things going on back here. We have a trip, so when you set your, your yoke, it will trip. And then we have a rectangular section to the uh, click ratchet that's going to serve as the stop with this anti-reverse dog here. Then we have the main gear. So one of the things with this wheel is it's been totally dry. It's clean, but it's totally dry. So it's been a long time since this wheel's been serviced. And uh, well, they got carbon text drags in it. That's not. A bad thing. And most of the time I'm going to let carbon text drags go. You don't need to, to uh, grease them, but in this case it looks like there might be a little bit of dirt on them too. So I'm going to use the, the grease to freshen it up a little bit and make sure that we get the dirt off of there. A good amount of grease goes on to the outer teeth on that main gear. And you want to make sure you have your anti-reverse dog set. This one just jumped off, so we want to make sure that we bring that back and load that. And turn it right now. Make sure that your, your anti-reverse dog is catching, and it's not. So we need to bring that out a little bit further. Press down on the main gear. Okay, we got it now. All right, we have two more of these drag washers. Yeah, these have been literally pressed in the service. They're frozen onto the, the metals. So I'm going to use a utility knife to separate those. They're not functional as they are. If they're stuck to the, the metals, uh, then they're not going to work very well. All right, I'm going to, I have a drag grease here. It's called Cal's Universal Drag Grease. So I'm going to treat them with that. I'm going to rub it on. That's going to get rid of any of the salts that were on there. Then you want to wipe it off so that you can see the cross hatching on the gears. First up is going to be a round or keyed washer with a rectangular center. I already put grease on the first one. So we put the grease on the second one. The middle washer is a keyed wash. It has a circular hole in the center and two well, ears that are kind of sticking out. And then we'll do the last one here. Same idea. Gonna spread it on, wipe it off gently, bring that back. I'm gonna load this cap washer on next. And then we're gonna just check because I had this thing drop a little bit. Yeah, we're okay. All right, that is the setup for this. Now the, the trick on this side, other than the light cleaning, and again, I don't know. Maybe there wasn't a lot of grease in this thing to start because there's not any grease inside the case, that's for sure. We can oil the set here. I just want to see which way this slide is going to operate. Okay, it's going to go down. And what we want to do now is we need to merge this stud with this piece here. And you can do that visually, I think. I'm going to certainly give it a good try here. If you're having an issue, just kind of work that lever, bring it out, make sure that it's free spooling, bring it back. I think we got it. It's, we don't have the um, drags attached. Well, I just looked at my parts tray. One of the reasons why I use that parts tray is because it keeps track of my pieces and parts. I just noticed. I didn't put the springs in for the yoke. Let's go do that now. And you get to see me do this again. The yoke springs go on top of the yoke. That's going to keep pressure 
to return that yoke when you trip your your free spool lever back. All right, let's do it again then. Load it up. I haven't moved anything, so we should be okay. There we go. Give it a spin. Make sure you have. There we go. Now we're now we've got a turning here. So I think what happened was there was wasn't any pressure pushing that back in. All right. Remember what we said. The ones that do not have the cross post are rough threaded. This one's kind of interesting. It's got a flat bladed screwdriver or flat blade, flat straight slot, if you will. Most of the reels these days have machine screws or a Phillips head. I think that's probably because it's easier for the machine tools to grip that. This one has, uh, well, has two versions of flat headed flat screwdrivers. All right. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe your own one, you want to know a little bit more about its use. Maybe you want to try and figure out where to buy parts. I think probably e-replacement parts is probably a, a good source for Abu Garcia parts. They're an online e-replacementparts.com. Problem with that site, unfortunately, is that it serves serves a wide amount of replacement parts. So you can get things for this, you can get pieces for lawn mowers, refrigerators, it's kind of kind of a crazy site, but you can get fishing reel parts. And I believe Abu Garcia is one of the, the brands that is supported on that site. Okay, we got one more that's gonna be set up here. Now I guess when I set this up, we're going to find out right away if I got the track bed on that uh, line guide. Okay, we're in. Let's go into free spool. Yeah, the, the line guide is running, running fine. I'm going to take a pad. It's got some rod and reel cleaner on it. Let's buff off some of that. You might need a this is particularly nasty stuff, so you might need some uh, steel wool to help you along with that. I use 4.0 steel wool. It's a very uh, mild, it's fine, it's not coarse. And, uh, well, we're going to press our luck on this side now, see if we can't get the screws out here. We want to take this off so that we can get to the spool. I want to get to the spool because we know there's bearings on there. Again, I think the two cross posts have the machine screws. Looks like we got to do the same thing here again with this cross post. Now you can also use something like electrical tape on that, uh, that crossbar if you want. I've had pretty good success using either a steel wool or a scrubby as the buffer to that. But if you're uh, if you're having trouble, an electric tape before you grab it with a pliers, put a strip or two of that black electrical tape. And uh, that's, that should serve you fine. I haven't put these into my parts tray yet. And I may not because there's only four screws remaining there. This should come off now, I think. I'm going to put these into the parts tray because, well, something just as simple as this, trying to remove the side plate can often lead to uh, knocking those pieces and parts into uh, oblivion. All right, for some reason, there you go, that one's out. There's one more st sticking here, and I think that's becoming a little bit of a problem. There you go. This, Sliding a screwdriver in here, but being careful as we, we walk it out. So on this side, you want to make sure that you oil the bearing. It says we have two bearings, so we, we want to get into the spool. We, we, know, we know that we, we've oiled it from that side. But if we can, we want to make sure that we do it here. 
Now the bearing is in the case. The bearing is in this case as well. So, so what I'll do is I'll oil it from here. Doesn't hurt to get a little bit more in there. This looks like the bearing on this side. This is a fixed spool, so the bearing's not there. So I'm going to use a cotton swab here just to mop that up a little bit. What we've done is we, we have a bearing off to the side here now. This is your bearing, the back end. That fits in a case like that. Oil that. And well, this is your line guide drive. So we'll make sure that we do that as well. Actually, line guide drive is on the other side. All right, let's uh, put that back in place. Not sure if I oiled the shaft on this side, so oil shafts on both sides or grease them. Bring this in. Now we need to reset this. Just trying to approximately line up the holes. There we go. And sometimes you might have an issue trying to reload reload that in. There we go. So just turn your turn your spool, turn your handle. That usually can be set then. Back in my tray now, we'll go take those screws again. Remember the cross crossbars are the ones that have the two fine threaded screws. Let's go put them back in. And the rougher threads go into the case. Okay, I'm going to come over to the other side here just so that we can keep this with even pressure on the side plates. And uh, while I do this, I'm not sure I encourage you to ask questions or not, but if you have a question, leave that in the comment section, and uh, that's the best way for me to respond. Generally in the mornings, I will try to answer questions before I uh, get busy in the shop. So if, if you have a question and a little bit of patience, generally I will get you an answer. Uh, I know some folks in the heat of battle, try to call the phone number that's on the card at the end of the presentation here. You can do that, but it's uh, well, it's hit or miss, and sometimes if you leave voice messages, they will go a day or two before I catch up with them. So I would encourage you to use the comment section first. All right, clean that all up. Let's just go finish the drive side now. We had the collar that looked like a bushing at one point. Tension washers. We have our star adjuster. Handles next. And the only thing we have to do is service the ball. Handle nut. Make sure you tighten down the drag washer before you tighten down the handle. If you don't do that, you run the risk of trapping the star adjuster and not being able to tighten it the reel up from a drag standpoint. Let's get that little cap on there, tension collar. You do have a little room for adjustment if you find out that it doesn't center exactly.
So I haven't seen this reel around, so I don't know any of the history on it. I don't know when it was sold and uh, the aging on it or the like. I do know that uh, it is, rel relatively speaking, uh, unusual. And what we'll do now is we'll remove the pawl cap. Let's see if we can't just tap that pawl out. Okay, that gentle tap or two did help remove it, and it's a good thing we did because there's a lot of rust and dirt on this. So of course we want to clean that. That'll facilitate it spinning easily and not jamming up. To do that, I'm going to use that steel wall that'll clean up the the dirt. And then you want to make sure as you're cleaning the, the pole that you get the shoulders. This one has a lot of dirt on it. And you also want to check the points on it. You want to make sure that the points are, are even and uh, uniform, and they are. So go ahead and put this back in. A little drop of oil on that will help it to move. A little drop of oil onto the worm guide as well. And a good way to set the pole is just to put some finger pressure on it and it'll push it down as you rotate the reel. Pole cap is next. I did feel it set in the groove. Tighten the cap and now we can give it a test. So we go in the free spool first, spin it. We've got our line guide is spinning nice and easily throughout the range. Now we want to go into gear. You can hear that anti-reverse is working. Click, click, click. Test your spool to make sure that the drag is holding. It is. And this reel's uh, ready to, to go fishing again. It's been cleaned. It's been oiled and greased. Uh, parts have been examined. There's nothing we can do about that line counter there in terms of replacing that part. But other than that, the reel is in good condition. We saw the gears were, were very dry. Uh, but they weren't damaged or anything. And, uh, well, this one's got a, a healthy amount of fishing left in it. A second chance. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. To our fire, police, safety, and rescue folks, thank you for your, what you do for a living as a career choice. And thank you for keeping us safe. To everyone, enjoy your, uh, your time on the water. If you haven't tuned up your reels, make sure that they're tuned before you uh, get ready to go fishing. No sense disappointing yourself by having something break before uh, the day is over. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.